Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com, and in this video, we're going to add a little life to our game. Right now, there are no audio effects, there's no background music, there's no sound indicating, hey, a shot's been fired, and honestly, in a game, that's kind of boring, so let's fix that. This video is going to be all about adding sound effects to our background, our tanks, our water balloons, our paintballs, and really giving it a nicer touch. So let's get started. To begin, we're going to need some audio assets. So let's go to the assets folder and we're just going to back up, grab this whole audio folder and drag it into our resources. Now that that's imported, you'll see that we've got a background loop, a launch sound, a paint sound, a splash sound, and a zap sound. So where do we want to start? Well, that's kind of arbitrary, but let's start with the tank. So open up game objects, tank, and then go to the scripts folder in there, and let's double click to open the tank script. We're gonna need to add just a couple of changes to our tank script to make this work with audio. The first change is we're gonna go ahead and add a couple more serialized fields. So let's type serialize field, and then private audio clip, and we're gonna call this shot sound and then one more serialized field private audio clip and this one's going to be called death sound and then we need a private class member and we're going to call this it's a type audio source and we're just going to call it audio source now the next step is to figure out where we need these sounds well, to begin with, we have to initialize this audio, audio source. So let's add the awake function. And it would be good for us to do some assertions anyways. They, they should have been done earlier, but we missed it. So let's go ahead and say audio source equals get component of type audio source. And then let's do our assertions. So let's say assert dot is not null. And we want to check for everything that does not have a default value and is not a vector three because vector threes are never null. So let's add a an assertion for the projectile. Let's add assert dot is not null spawn placeholder cert dot is not null audio source cert dot is not null shot sound and assert dot is not null death sound cool now that that's done, let's save. And then we need to use this somewhere. So where does it make sense to use this shot sound? Well, if you answered in the fire projectile function, then you're absolutely right. So let's go here right after it fires. And we're just going to say audio source dot play one shot shot sound and that's going to play our shot sound one time after a bullet fires now for the death sound it would make sense for it to go into the destroy self function right probably right before it destroys so let's go ahead and go just above this wait for one second and we're going to say audio source dot play one shot death sound Perfect. With that, we are done with the tank. So let's save this script and head back to Unity. There is, however, one more step we need to do before we can call it fully done with the tank. If you remember, we added an audio source, so we need to go add that to our model. So just come to the enemy tank prefab, scroll all the way to the bottom, click add component, and we're going to type in audio source. And it'll pull up audio source as the first result. 
So let's go ahead and look at our audio folder. And let's grab this launch sound and we're going to drag that into the shot sound. And then for the death sound parameter, we're going to go ahead and grab this zap. There we go. Now we're done with the tank. What do we want to move on to next? Well, if you answered the screen cannon, then I agree. So let's head to our screen cannon under AR tabletop kit, AR root, main camera. And down here in the screen cannon script, we're going to need to make a couple of changes. So let's click on the script right here, open that up, and make those changes real quick. Now this is going to be a lot like our tank. We're just going to need to add a serialized field. So up here in the parameters, let's add serialized field, private, audio clip, and we're going to call this shot sound. And then down here by our private variables, we're going to go ahead and say private audio source, audio source. Perfect. Now let's head to our awake function and we're going to make a couple of assertions and get that audio source. So step one, audio source with a lowercase equals get component of type audio source. Once that's done, let's come down here to our assertions. Well, right now it's just an assertion. And we're going to add a couple of new assertions to this for validation when this first runs. So let's say assert dot is not null audio source and then assert dot is not null shot sound. Perfect. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to head down to the, where is it? Fire shot function. And just at the very end of this, we're going to add the sound for our water balloon being shot. So we'll just say audio source dot play one shot, shot sound. Let's save that script and head back to Unity. And then we need to go ahead and add the launch sound to our shot sound parameter in our screen cannon script. And then we need one more component to add to this camera. And it's going to be an audio source as well, because this launch sound is going to go looking for it. OK. Now that we've got our screen cannon set up, let's turn off this play on awake. And let's go and update the water ball to get the splash sound that we want. Now, looking at the script and looking at how we're going to do this, we actually want to create a whole different script in a different folder because the paint ball and the water ball are going to have very similar functionalities. So to avoid violating the dry principle, let's create a universal script that we can use for both of them. Scroll down into our scripts folder, and we're going to add a new folder in that. So create folder, and we're going to call this collision handlers. And let's go ahead and add a new script. So create C sharp script. And we're going to call this Collision Audio Manager. Let's double click that script to go into it to edit. And we're going to get rid of these two functions because we're not going to need them. Let's go ahead and add a serialized field. So let's add serialized field. And that's going to be called private audio clip sound clip. And then one more serialized field. And that's going to be private string array target tags. And then we just need a private audio source 
And again, we'll just call it audio source. We'll need the awake function. So private awake, private void awake, rather. And then we're going to say audio source equals get component audio source. And let's make some assertions to make sure that we're good to go. And we're going to say assert dot is not null sound clip and then assert dot is not null audio source and assert dot is not null target tags and then we just need a function called private void on trigger enter and we're passing in a collider other and we're just going to say play sound other dot game object dot tag and the play sound function doesn't exist yet we're going to write that here in just a second the next function we need is private void on collision enter there we go and we'll be passing in a collision called other and we'll just say play sound and pass in other dot game object dot tag. Perfect. Let's scroll down so you can see a little better. And then our last function that we need is private void play sound. And we're going to pass in a string called other tag. And this is just the tag that the other object, whatever's collided with the item that this script is on, has. And we're just going to say if target tags dot contains other tag. So if our array of target tags has this other tag in it, then we go ahead and say audio source dot play one shot and then our sound clip that we're going for. There we go, perfect. Now this function, oops. Now this script is all set up, so let's save and go back to Unity. And we're gonna add this to a couple of objects. Let's shrink everything down so we can see it a little better. Let's expand our game objects folder. And I guess shrink the tank, shrink these scripts. Cool, now I can see it. And let's go ahead and select our water ball. And we're just going to grab this collision audio manager and drag it onto the water ball underneath its water ball script. Then we'll grab the, I guess we have to expand resources. We'll grab the splash sound and hook that in there. And then we'll go for target tags. And we're going to change the size to two, or one rather. The only one we care about is going to be enemy. And that's the tag that we'll be adding to our tanks to make sure that they're labeled correctly as enemies. And then let's go to the paintball prefab. And we're just going to click add component just to show you another way to do this. We're going to grab collision audio manager out of the search and add it there. And then we'll take the paint audio clip and drop it into the sound clip parameter. Then we're going to update this target tags array to two. So size of two, because we want to target our buildings and our points of interest. So type in building as the first element and then POI as the second element. Now you may have noticed something we're missing audio managers here. So let's go ahead and add those. So to our paintball, let's add an audio source. Let's turn off the play on awake. Go to the water ball and add an audio source there as well. Turn off play on awake. And with that, we're just about done with the sounds. So let's head up to our camera object because we need one more sound here. We've got our launch sound on the screen cannon that's attached here, but we also have some background music that we want to play. So in the interest of always having that available to the player, let's go ahead and add that here. And adding the background music is actually really, really easy. 
we're just going to go ahead and grab this background loop or BG loop audio clip, drop it in the audio clip spot, and we're going to say loop and play on awake. Now with that, we can go and fine tune our volume however we want when we go to clean things up at the very end. But we have all of our audio set up. It's ready to roll. So great job. That's it. Now that we've gone to all that trouble of setting up the audio, let's give it a listen and see what it sounds like. Let's go ahead and press play. Pretty cool, right? What you're hearing is the background music, the cannons shooting, and the sound of paint splatting up against the buildings. So let's go ahead and stop running. In this video, we've set up our audio. We've added audio to the paintball, the water ball, or our main camera for the background loop, our screen cannon script, and our tank. And this will add a lot more polish and make our game much more playable and provide a better user experience. So great job following along. Let's get moving on to the next part of this project. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.